Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to talk about geometry nodes and jewelry. I'm obviously going to be the first channel to do this. So geometry nodes, they're everywhere, but are they any use for us? Okay, and here it is. This is the first ring designed entirely with geometry nodes in Blender 3.0 Alpha. This file is ready for 3D printing. So the question is obvious because it's fairly easy to make random designs using geometry nodes and to make it work as a jewelry design. If you just need random creativity, well, it's obvious that geometry nodes are useful. They're fun. Just do whatever with them. Just plug in that in there, change numbers and see if it works. You might get a jewel like this one. Actually, that's exactly how I made this design. Let's go have a look at the node settings here at geometry nodes. Okay. so. This is the geometry node for this design. It's a very simple geometry node setup in that generates, well, some pretty complex looking jewel. Obviously, because I'm a jeweler and like I always say on my channel, I design things that I can manufacture because I almost manufacture everything I design. So making very attractive design with geometry nodes is really possible. This design is just based on Okay, so before I explain more about geometry nodes and why we are really here today, well, this design is a setting with four prongs and a diamond. It's all it takes to make this design using geometry nodes. Now, let's go to the nodes setup. Okay, so first with geometry nodes, you need something that has vertices, points, because most of geometry nodes, they're going to start somewhere using point instances. So let's have a look. This is the input. This on the other side is the output. Okay, so my base mesh is a circle extruded and made a bit smaller on one side. Okay, this is the base geometry for my nodes. It's really simple. And that's why, yes, we talk wonders about jewelry, uh, jewelry nodes. <laughs> I'm not going to cut that in addition. I mean, they should be called jewelry nodes. On this channel, they're going to be called jewelry nodes. No, sorry geometry nodes to make jewelry using blender so the base mesh is very simple okay let's go out of edit mode and let's plug again the process of the nodes and wow we get this but now you can already understand ah okay this object there with the stone here it's multiplying on each vertex this is exactly what's happening and basically it's all that's happening with the setup i have we can we're gonna see here um well so the first concept is Point instance for the nodes. Well, you need to go obviously to geometry node editor. It's not just a shader or something like that. You need to go to the geometry node editor, all right? And well, and well, you add nodes the good old way. So let's do by example point inst. Okay, here it is. You take your node, and there you have the node. Here you just select what object is going to get multiplied on each vertex. That's what it does. The name says it. Okay, that's fairly simple. Okay, now there's just something. Okay, this node here makes the orientation. This node here makes the orientation of the object around the circle, around the geometry, to the center, which is one of the hard parts. Let's say it's not that hard, but okay. And then uh, the nodes. Well, here that's why I'm using Blender 3.0. The material, the material assign node. You won't have that node before version 3.0. I was using version 2.93, and I was not finding that node, and. If you don't have the node, you can't make the render work because your object is just going to come out with no specific material and you could not make this wonderful render. Okay. So I obviously also wanted to be able to make a very spectacular render of my geometry node setup for jewelry. But remember, we're just on the creative side now because this is just a quick example um, on making something creative which is not the goal of today's video and tutorial. Today, I want to show how to make professional jewelry design using geometry nodes. This is just a random creativity design, which is fun to do. It obviously has some commercial potential because, well, I love designing and my brand and my fame and all of that. So some of my clients are going to love this design and say, I want this design. Tell it to me. I want it in white gold with diamonds. All right, let's manufacture this. And because it's designed to be manufactured, it's all right. I will manufacture and sell this jewel or sell the 3D model and, and so on. But this is easy. This is not even using the geometry nodes. 
in such an interesting way. So this is considered generative jewelry. It's a branch of the jewelry design field. It's been abused so much that it's not even interesting anymore because generative jewelry already existed over the last decades. It's not new anymore. And this type of design is cool, nice looking. It has some commercial potential, like I already said, but this is just random jewelry because this is, because in fact, one of the great aspects of geometry nodes and generative processes and workflows is randomness. So, well, let's admit it. Randomness for jewelry design is not really such an attractive concept because it's just like, let's make whatever works and you can make many random designs using geometry nodes. Have a lot of fun, but really work as a professional jeweler or, uh, or create a jewelry brand based on just random designs. That's not the best idea. So that's a quick example of a creative usage of geometry nodes. You can see that the setup is very simple. You can recreate that with any design you like. It's going to work. It's amazing. Yes. It's fast. Yes. It's painful. Yes. But it's just a bit too random for professional usage. But today we're here for a far better question. Okay, so first, a very important thing. Uh, you need a Blender 3.0. Oh, oh, oh. That's because the best nodes, the best geometry nodes, they're starting to appear since Blender 3.0. I know because I started using Blender 2.93, which is the version I daily use, as you might know. But there's, by example, a very simple material assigned node, geometry node, that is not present in earlier versions. So you can have that much fun. And, uh, well, I installed the latest build just yesterday. And this is why we have this tutorial, because everything I wanted to test and try and do is working. So let's move ahead. Okay, so we already saw. <laughs> All right, great. So we already saw that we can create whatever we want. That's nice. Every other channel and every other designer and every, and every other blender is going to show you that and tell you that that's the genius of Geometry Note. Okay, great. But we are jewelers, mostly, or designers. And uh, well, it's cool to be able to do some random creative fun. I know it's fun, but that might not be very productive. And uh, obviously, uh, when I said that this tutorial was going to be legendary, in fact, it was not for the first part of the video. It's for what's coming now. And the best way to show it and to prove it is making a design, but really another type of design using geometry nodes. Now I need to append the diamond, file append. So let's make a cool design, but a design that a professional jeweler would really make and really sell to his normal customers. Okay, so I'm going to start with the stone setting. We're going to design a nice setting and then work with the geometry node.
Okay, so let's first make a nice design like this small setting with small decorations on the outside. You can say it's hollow, perfect for diamonds, perfect in white gold for perfect for some type of ring, by example. Okay, so let's get started with setting up the geometry nodes. So where are they going to go? Let's add a mesh circle. Let's center it. Now there you're going to choose how many stones the ring is going to get. In fact, let's keep 24 in the radius. Let's make it at 19.3 divided by 2. And don't forget to align it to the view. Great. Now let's go to shading and let's go to geometry nodes. New. Okay, so we get our inputs and outputs. So let's first work with the instance. Instance, point instance. Let's put it here. And let's just bring the diamonds first here. Okay, this is already pretty nice, but obviously the orientation. Let's add a vector align node here. Uh, it's going to be on Z based on an attribute. The attribute is the normal. Now here we get a message, no attribute with name normal. That's because a circle has no faces. To have normals, you need faces. So let's go to the ring here, edit mode, A, E on the Y axis, and we're going to get something like that. So we have the normals and we can align to the center now. And sometimes the factor might be minus one and it works. So that's already a pretty nice step. Great. So obviously this is going to duplicate my design somehow because I want an eternity ring, you know, with stones all, all around and settings, with stones and settings all around. But, well, to get normals and the alignment we need, that's a nice way to do it. And we might get the duplication really far apart and then we'll be able to cut it in half and get the one ring we want. That's not really a much of a problem. Okay, now we can bring the settings exactly the same way. Let's duplicate this. Here, let's search for the setting. So we can have a look, let's put this right here and right there. Okay, we have the settings. The only thing I want to have a look at is, are they overlapping too much? Okay, so let's bring a point scale before the rest. Here maybe, or there if you want, that's okay too. And let's go at 0 0.9, 0 0.9, let's have a try here. Maybe 0 0.85, 0 0.85. Okay, this looks great. Okay, so something we need to check always is also the face orientation. Okay, this is my base mesh making the geometry nodes, and it's all upside down. So, A, mesh, normal flip. Let's go out of edit mode. Let's remove the face orientation, and let's plug in the settings. Okay, now we're going somewhere. Okay, here I have, let's say, a small design problem, which is that for the size of my settings and diamonds, I just can't make any size of this ring, or I would have to change the scale of the settings and the diamonds, which we can do. We can avoid the contact using small bridges at the base of the setting. Let's go model that. So here I'm just going to add a cube, a very small bridge down here. Let's center, obviously, let's remove. Okay, so let's center the cube some way somewhere here. We can put a subdivision surface if we want. Let's make it like this. And we can design something here too. Let's subdivide this and maybe extrude. Let's take these faces. Let's extrude. extrude it like that and move it like this. So this, now we can adapt the size here. Something like We can design a small bridge to make the design work. Don't forget that we manufacture almost all that we design. Okay, let's go back to geometry nodes <coughs> and my ring, my double ring for now. Okay, so I want to, I could join the bridges with the setting, but I don't want to do that for now. Okay, so it's going to be small bridges. Let's bring this and let's have a look here. <laughs> That's why working with geometry nodes is always interesting. This could be a very nice design for earrings or a pendant. By the way, it's not at all what I need or what I want, but it's great. So let's have a look at this. Let's make a control A, all transforms. Okay, that's a bit better. So these are the small interconnecting bridges. I think they're working. For, from what I see, I can see that they're going to work as small bridges between the settings. Okay, let's go back to the ring. Well, now we can start using the join geometry node. It's like adding what we have here and here. Okay, so we can have a look. That's that's pretty nice. And what I love about having the stone separately, the setting separately, and by example, these small bridges separately, is that we can adjust the design. Is that we can adjust the design whenever we want. If I can change, if I want to change the bridges or adapt the bridges, I can do it. And actually now I think I'm going to move 
Okay, so there's more bridges here. I might have a look at what happens if we move them a bit to the side on the Y axis. Okay, and they're going to get a mirror on the Y axis. Okay, this is this is just magnificent. We can see how it connects the small gaps between the settings, making a very nice design element, which is a real plus. And that's why you know you're working as a professional, is that all these elements are part of your modeling process. It's not just a mistake. At the beginning, it might be a mistake, but then you get right away the idea, oh, this is going to be a design element. It's making the design way more attractive. Okay, great. All right, so obviously now let's bring the stones. We just need to connect this here. They're going to be too big now because they need, and also the orientation. Um, okay, they need just one for the orientation and they need a scale also like here. And that's why having them separately is nice. Also because later you might do something more complicated for each part. So if you would have just one element being the stone with the setting and decorations as one mesh, as one instance, you would not take advantage of this amazing concept I'm sharing using geometry nodes for jewelry design in Blender. That's why always think first, which is a meme. I know it's a meme, but it should not be a meme. It's very <laughs> okay, well, this is basically amazing. If you understand that this is amazing, then you understood almost everything in life. <laughs> so obviously there are some, well, the sacrifice here is that I must duplicate the ring to get the normal orientation and be able to work with orientation. But honestly, that's that's nothing uh, serious. That's nothing very serious because we just get the design twice, which is good because we can have a look at it and spot any mistake right away. But the thing is that the proof of concept is right here. Jewelry design using geometry nodes. Okay, so now we still have something to solve. This is geometry, but this, this is geometry, which means that they're all instances of our first design and it's multiplying using the nodes. Great, but I want to be able to 3D print this in just the ring, okay? How can we do that? Okay, so first first thing, I want this ring at size seven because here in Mexico, it's one of the biggest standard for commercial ring design. We start at seven. Okay, so seven is 17.3 and that's the size I need. I'm going to remove the other one. So let's go to edit mode and make the ring smaller and let's have a look if the design is great at that size. It's a bit too big. Okay, I'm going to adjust that. Okay, let's go at 85 for everything, stone, setting, and for the bridges. Okay. So if I remove the gemstones from these guys, we're going to lose the gemstones on the copy. And I would not like that. So let's go to the geometry nodes and let's duplicate and let's make it for SDL, just for naming things the proper way. Okay. And this one doesn't need... Okay. So let's remove the gemstones just like this. And this is great. We can see I have a set with the gemstones, which is the original design. And we have another set here without the gemstones. Okay, let's go back to layout. Now, well, now we need to apply, simply apply the modifier. And this is going to become a mesh. And this is the time to go to edit mode. And this is where we can simply remove the ring we don't need. Because like I said, this is not such a serious issue for this workflow. Let's just go here. Alt A. Don't forget to have the transparency turned on. Select just the side you don't want. Delete vertices. And well, we're going to get our design, which is one eternity ring with custom settings and decorations. It's still removing. So obviously we have several millions vertices, but that's okay for such a pretty design. And remember that in jewelry, we tend to work with high resolutions because the printers, the resin printers are very, very accurate and it's better to have nicely detailed designs. Okay, so this is the ring. It doesn't look that well, but that's because of the shading here. We can try to have it back. Okay. So this is just to make it look good on screen. The shading, the 3D view is not affecting the geometry of the model. What's important for 3D printing is to have a very perfect and nice geometry like this one. And this is ready to go to file, export, SDL. Okay. So this is the name of the jewel here. Don't forget to put selection only. That's source of many mistakes, just a small selection there. Selection only for your SDL exports. This SDL is going to be really heavy and it's not necessary to have such a heavy SDL file. You won't win that much resolution from a certain point. And that means that we can use, okay, so let's go use the decimate modifier to have a look at how many millions we have. We have almost 5 million faces. That's way too heavy. Uh, you should stay around 500,000 to be, to be good. You can go higher. I mean, I, I manufactured 
uh, way heavier SDLs without any problems on my printer all the all these years. And um, let's go at 15%. It's going to take almost five minutes to calculate this. Okay, so the decimate already worked. We have 1 million. That's still pretty high, but honestly, this is really good for such a detail ring. So you don't even have to apply the modifier now. You just can take your object, go to file, export, SDL, selection only, then forget that. This is my file, double click there. Just wait, I just make some clicks on screen. Okay, the exportation is done. So this is an obvious success, but we still have to prove that the SDL is error free or that we can repair the SDL's damages. So let's go to the SDL doctor. Okay, and here it is. This is the first ring designed entirely with geometry nodes in Blender 3.0 Alpha. This file is ready for 3D printing. It has absolutely nothing to be repaired, no damages at all. We can see all we can see all our small details on the sides. So I just answered one of the most important questions about Blender and geometry nodes. I showed and explained how to create geometry node setups as a professional tuner to be able to make such a design come true. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for becoming a member. Thanks for supporting my channel, buying my 3D assets on the Blender market. Thanks for supporting Blender and supporting Luke's Core. Also, make your donations. They're great software, great people. And, um, well, be happy, be nice to people, be nice to animals, be nice to the planet. Take care, enjoy, and see you soon.